Hey guys, uh, Steve with Pacific Employers here, and uh, I, it, we're flipping the tables again. We're keeping you guys guessing on a daily basis. Uh, <laughs> today I have with me James Beretti from Beretti Inc. Safety, and uh, how are you doing today, James? Staying safe? Yeah, doing well so far, Steve. Um, you know, we're still hanging in there like everybody else, uh, starting to get a lot of questions of how we keep places safe uh, as we start to reopen. So everybody's looking for ways that they can make sure they, they, uh, everything remains really healthy and safe so they get customers back. Yeah, yeah, join the club. We're we're uh, also looking at a lot of HIPAA compliance issues on this end, which we'll end up doing in another video, uh, oh, wow. and violations on HIPAA. Um, so we're getting all uh, in array. I, I tell you what, we're gainfully employed and busy. Um, so <laughs> that's good yeah, for agreed. both of us. Agreed. Uh, well, I brought you on today. I wanted to talk about, uh, we were chatting the other day about the safety maturity grid. Yes. Uh, and I was wondering if you could kind of unwrap that, um, for, uh, us today. Sure. Actually, I prepared a little bit of a slideshow for us. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick and share that screen and put that slideshow up. So there we go. As soon as we get that thing going. Awesome. Okay. So, you know, last time you and I were speaking, we were talking about uh, reopening and what customers or uh, clients are facing and what businesses are facing. And you put together the whole MDG uh, process and how that works, which I thought was really, really good. And it got me thinking about this from a safety maturity standpoint, because a lot of times when people, especially today, are talking about reopening, they're discussing how do we keep everything safe? Um, and a lot of times people are kind of relying upon where they really stand before this whole COVID event was occurring uh, with regard to their safety program and their safety process. So here's a little grid that uh, I've used and taught other safety professionals as a way to really kind of judge where companies stand and really where they need to go with regard to uh, their whole understanding of safety and that whole process. So as you can see, there's different categories here. It's an organization status. In other words, where's the safety organization really at? How do they handle safety problems? How do they handle safety improvement actions? You know, what's their real safety posture? Kind of a quote thing here. And then the interesting thing is the cost of safety as a percent of sales. And we've always maintained that safety is an investment in this whole process. So mm -hmm. give you an idea how that works. If the company is in a stage of uncertainty, it really means that safety is kind of hidden within the organization. They really don't tend to do anything about safety and managing that as a component within a successful business. Um, you know, safety is fought. Uh, problems for safety are fought every time they occur. Um, there's really no organized, uh, you know, activities, and they don't know why they have problems with safety. And when you're at that point, you're at a point where you really don't have it organized. You really don't have a measure in place. And as a result, you can see you know, they really don't know what the cost of safety is uh, as a percent of sales, and typically it's 20%. And a lot of people are like, that just sounds like an outrageous number. That's well, crazy. Well, it is, isn't it? 20% of sales, but it's like, really? Think about the risks that you're taking, all the lost productivity that you have because people are tiptoeing around things that are unsafe to work with, or they're doing things to compensate for risk to customers as well. And that's waste in productivity. It's waste in the way that you actually manage your business. So then we have people who are definitely in the awakening stage, and that's where they have a safety leader. Um, and there might be a team, but there's really no long range solutions. Does that safety, I hate to interject, but does yeah. that safety leader have to be a manager or can it just be somebody that's very experienced in safety within uh, the team? And typically in this kind of level here, it's usually somebody who they look at and say, you have an interest in safety, you're now the safety leader. Okay. And so what happens is everything safety wise now goes to that individual. There is no management accountability for it. Um, you know, we would never do that with accounting, would we? I mean, no, certainly no. everybody's responsible <laughs> for their expenses, right? Who takes over accounting? I don't know. George seemed uh, good know, at it last week, we don't so sit, uh, he's got it. it. Exactly. And we don't sit there and turn around and say, oh, well, you know, expense control is the responsibility of the accountant in the business. I right. have nothing to do with it. I just have to spend what I'm going to spend. That doesn't usually fly far. And right. that's the same thing that we have at this stage. So 
what the company has done is they've appointed someone. So it could be a manager, maybe wearing multiple hats. It could be, you know, a supervisor who always shows an intense interest in safety. And they say, congratulations, you're now responsible for it. It could be any of those things. Um, it could be a safety professional, but what's happened is they figured they hire a safety professional. So there were, therefore, all their safety issues go away. All their problems go away. Right. And that's not the case. We know that this is definitely an integrated type of operation, just like accounting is, just like operations is, just like, you know, all those things that are so foundational for success with an organization. So you can see here, you know, the quote on the safety action improvement here is, you know, it's motivational type short range efforts. Right. Hey, you know, if we just motivate people to be safe, they're going to be safe, yet they don't know how to do it. Um, you know, is it necessary that we always have problems for safety? That's kind of their posture. And you can see that the cost of safety, they believe, is about 3%, when in fact, the actual is about 18% of sales. All of this, by the way, we've done over the years. I've been able to show people from a financial standpoint where they truly stand. So then the third stage here is now there is a safety leader. But that leader now reports to top management. Now, notice the foundational structural change. Okay, here, management has said, okay, this is obviously very important. And we're going to put eyes on this. We're going to manage this process. Okay, so there's now corrective action uh, communication. They might implement a 14-step program. And you might be wondering what a 14-step program is, especially since in California, we have an injury and illness prevention program that has eight elements. Well, the 14-step program is based upon uh, Peter... Druckers and you know a lot of people uh, along those years uh, with quality assurance and, and efficiency uh, in productivity and management systems. So there's a lot of different things here that go on with the 14-step program. Certainly something we can always talk about in the future. Um, the company safety posture at this point in time is really management commitment. We hey we're going to give we're going to be committed to this, you know, and we're going to do something with safety improvement now. That tends to sometimes be a lot of words to say. And when it comes to the safety improvement, well, there's a lot of discussion, hence the reason why the safety leader reports to top management. But notice the percentage, okay? It's reported as 8% of sales, when in actuality, it's probably more and closer to 12%. So you can see we've gone from, gee, we really just don't want to deal with this to, okay, we're going to take some seriousness here. Now, take a look at this as it goes forward. Okay, so now the organization status at wisdom level is that the effective status reporting is going on and the safety person is at the top of the organization. They're actually an officer, okay, meaning that they now have absolute buy-in for this game, okay, and that problem handling, anything dealing with safety is identified early, people are open to hearing about what the problem's on because you can't solve your problems if you don't know what they are. You know, why even try to address it then? I mean, you're paying so much waste and losing so much money if you're not looking at the problems and being open to those now, things. Now, James, it, does your company provide those services as far as putting a safety officer on site? Oh, yeah, absolutely. We do that. We uh, definitely have a division. We act in the, the role as safety officer. Um, uh, we also find people and, you know, put them there full time. They work for us, but they're dedicated right. to them. So, yeah, thanks. Thanks right. for asking that. So, but yeah, you can see the 14 step program now is a comprehension. People understand what it is. They understand how that works with efficiency. They understand how that works with the uh, operation. And therefore, it's now becoming part of the business function. So defect prevention is a routine part of our operation, meaning we're looking for the defects because we're open to identifying those problems early before they become a risk that we don't want to have. And that becomes very costly. Now, notice the reported is 6.5% as percent of safety uh, is sales but the actual is 8%. Notice how the cost of safety is actually reducing. And that's because it's becoming an efficient part of the organization. So one more for you here, okay? So now we're, we're totally engaged into this whole thing. And what you've got now is that prevention is understood and safety is a thought leader. Again, we're still dealing with the top end of the organization. It is part of the function. The safety professional at that level understands business understands how the operation works and therefore it is now truly integrated within it okay it's so you part can of see, a culture it's oh, part absolutely. of absolutely 
absolutely. I mean, it is the way we're now doing work. You know, people at that level, and this is unfortunately not a lot of companies that are in that mm-hmm. realm right now, but it definitely is. This is just the way we work. We work safely. We do these things. A safety problem is viewed just as important as an expense problem, just as important as a production inefficiency issue. You know, it's problem solving that it then solves not just one issue, but removes risk and makes the uh, operation more efficient. So in this case, the company safety posture is now, we know why we don't have problems with safety. They can answer that. But notice the cost of safety as a percent of sales. It's two and a half percent and the actual is two and a half percent. And the reason why is because it's measured within the business function. You know, it is all there. Everybody knows what they need to do, you know, and it's no big deal. It doesn't interrupt business flow. It doesn't interrupt production. It doesn't interrupt any of those things. And as you can see, this is quite a busy grid, but a lot of times what we find is people just don't fall in line with one vertical stage. They tend to be at various levels. Mm, What we always like to do is see the organization status a little bit ahead of everything else because we know leadership is in place and it's driving to improvement. So absolutely. So as people come back to work and start to reopen really with safety very much on the forefront of their minds. Now they're starting to look at where do we really stand? What do we really need to do? Because again, in this kind of environment, which we're reopening our businesses, it's all about confidence and the confidence that someone who comes to go to frequent your place of work or purchase your goods and services, they know they will not end up catching anything that could be communicable from there. But the same thing with employees, they are confident that they can come to work and be safe while working there. So I thought that might be a good thing to share with you this time. That's awesome. Thanks, James. I truly appreciate it. One thing too, with the organizational status, I almost feel like that's the proverbial glass ceiling for you guys. So it's not like anything else can move forward unless, you know, you actually have the officer for reporting or that is a main concern or, you know, that is the culture that, that the organization takes because if you just have a safety leader and you're talking about a 14 step plan, those two things don't go together. You, you have to get the organizational status forward uh, before you can even start addressing the, uh, the below issues. Correct. And a lot of people think that it takes a large organization to make this happen. Oh, I'm going to go out and hire a, a safety board of directors person or something like that and get this big staff into place. And that's not the case, you know, person or people who know, know safety. Uh, They can have consultants come in and work with them and really progress through these stages and end up having very competent people who are part of the organization, you know, and the reporting structure and really move this along. I think that we have the same uh, issue within our industry of HR is that people realize that, oh, well, you know, the cost is so much or this, that, and the other. And when you actually break it down, we're a lot less than what an actual employee would be and and the money you're going to save, uh, but it allows you to get to those additional, um, I don't know, uh, structures or organizational yeah. statuses. Yeah, um, absolutely. So, absolutely. Yeah, right? And, and then sometimes you're a better, the money you spend is business. money you save. There you go. Um, <laughs> but you really just have to address that and figure it out. Well, I encourage everybody that's watching to reach out to James. Uh, if you have any HR, or I'm sorry, safety questions, um, if you have, uh, any HR questions, those are mine. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you have any you safety it. questions, definitely reach out to James and the Bready, uh, Inc team. Uh, they'd love to help you out in any way that they possibly can. Uh, you can reach them via their website, email, uh, all that good stuff. So again, thanks again, James, for sitting down with me today. And, Thank uh, you, Steve. I appreciate you. Always a pleasure. Same here, Stay man. Safe. Thanks. Okay. Right. Take care. Bye.